ask any 3D artist right now what makes exceptional photorealistic CGI and they will probably tell you it's not the big and flashy stuff which sells the illusion, rather it is the subtle sneaky little details that fool the brain into thinking a render is photoreal and not just a bunch of pixels on the screen. And a key part of this magic is something that is called subsurface scattering, a concept we deal with every day, yet many artists overlook its importance. So what is it, how does it work, and how did it become a thing in the first place? First of all, let me tell you a little secret about photorealistic 3D rendering. The tricks that artists use aren't a pile of crazy computer nonsense thrown together for the sake of it. Rather, they are a collection of methods and techniques which are used to simulate what is happening in the real world, like based on the rules of physics and science that we all know, or maybe we don't know. The point is, subsurface scattering isn't exempt from that. In fact, it is something that is already happening right now under your nose. I mean literally, under your nose, your ears, and your skin in general. But how does that work? Now, I want you to grab your phone, turn on the flashlight, and point it to your hand from underneath it. Now, do you see the light that passes through your skin and creates a soft glowing effect? Well, this is subsurface scattering or as they call it, subsurface light transport. But here's the trick. This phenomenon only works with translucent materials, which leads us to the question of what does that even mean? Honestly, there is no strict rule for what counts as translucent materials or something that doesn't count. And it is more of you know it when you see it kind of deal. Besides, some materials are more translucent than others, but generally a translucent material is any material that you can't see through clearly, but it still allows the light to pass through, such as human skin, grapes, marbles, and the list goes on. Anyways, when light rays hit a surface with a certain level of translucency, some of the rays will get absorbed into the surface and scattered inside it, and then exit the surface at different spots, giving these materials a soft and realistic appearance. It is also worth mentioning that this effect is so subtle, you might even miss it if you blink. And from what I have seen, it split the community to two camps, those who swear by it and those who don't play its importance. For me, I ignored subsurface scattering for ages when I started out, and honestly, I didn't think it mattered too much. But when I finally gave it a shot, I was blown away by how important it is and the results it can change. The reason for this is how important subsurface scattering is when you are trying to create organic materials in 3D, such as paper, marble, wax, and most importantly, human skin and different other skins, due to the way our brains are designed, and because of a weird phenomenon that you might experience known as the uncanny valley, an uneasy and an anxious feeling that you may feel by looking at humanoid robots, CGI characters, or other artificial creations that almost look human. And the key word here is almost, so they are not quite there yet because it is missing that little human touch to trick your brain into believing it is real. While many reasons can trigger this effect, you know those awful CG characters we have seen in the beginning of the 2000s, it is undeniable that subsurface scattering helps avoid this creepy feeling and it will help make CG humans more believable and more realistic. Within subsurface scattering, there is also a very rich history, with roots deep in the world of academia, which has grown a lot over the years, with researchers constantly introducing new ideas and methods along the way. According to a paper from 2012, the concept of subsurface scattering was first proposed by someone born in the land of the rising sun, meaning Japan, and this guy was called Akira Ishimaru a Japanese-American electrical engineer who introduced the concept in 1978. However, it presented many technical complications and it was hard to compute and render. After encountering these limitations, many researchers proposed different solutions to defy this challenge. And one key study was the reflection from layered surfaces due to subsurface scattering by Pat Hanrahan and Wolfgang Kruger. 
which introduced many exciting innovations, including a general method that could be implemented into ray tracing engines, and a model that was particularly appropriate for common layered materials such as biological tissues like skin and leaves as well as inorganic materials like sand and snow. And as exciting as this is, none of it was done on a serious level. You know, in Hollywood blockbusters, at least not yet, until the fateful night in the winter of 1998, when Henrik Jensen, a computer graphics researcher, was messing around with a laser pointer. And suddenly he pointed it at a marble rock, and now most people would have just gone back to whatever they were doing. But Jensen had a different idea in mind because it got him thinking about skin. You see, back then, digitally created characters in films lacked a certain realism. I mean a certain level of realism, and artists were failing to produce or reproduce the way light rays kind of go through translucent objects such as skin. So Jensen teamed up with Joel Thierry, who was a visual effects supervisor at Water Digital at the time, and together, along with their development team, created a subsurface scattering light software for the animation of realistically translucent human skin to bring the iconic golem to life in The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, which was the first character to have light diffused skin in a movie. And it was a groundbreaking work that won a technical achievement award from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Honestly, we are barely scratching the surface here with many other researchers and ideas that I could mention, but hey, this is just to give you the big picture here and to help you understand the topic. And if you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. But now the question is, how does actually subsurface scattering work? You see, there are many ways that you can create subsurface scattering, and it all boils down to the rendering engine, and whether it is real time or not, which we'll get into in a second. But for offline rendering, like I said, the method you would use depends on the software because it uses more or less a different algorithm. For the sake of demonstration, let's go with a fan favorite from the open source category, and I'm betting you can guess which one. And of course, I'm talking about Blender. First of all, let's not worry too much about the math here. Instead, let's focus on how things actually work. First of all, you can pick a color that will affect the tint of the light as it scatters throughout the material. For example, skin becomes red colored when the light goes through it. And then there is the radius parameter to control how far light scatters beneath the surface. And a higher radius will give it a softer appearance. Besides, the scattering distance for each RBG channel is specified separately. Because to go back to the skin example, red light scatters deeper. So it makes more sense to edit each color channel separately. And lastly, you have a global scale that adjusts the overall scale of how light scatters throughout the surface of the material. Just be aware that this is just a broad explanation. And there are also some other settings and theories. And as I said, it really depends on which software that you're using. And I hope this explains it even if it is just a little bit better. Now. On the other side of the spectrum, you have real-time subsurface scattering, which can be found in popular game engines such as Unreal or Unity. But actually, some might argue that it is just a myth, or more like a trick than real-time subsurface scattering. And to be honest, this is not exactly wrong. The main issue with subsurface rendering is that it takes a lot of resources to render, such as a strong hardware which might be needed. I mean, it involves simulating how light penetrates and scatters within a surface after all. So you can only imagine how difficult this is. And to face this challenge, many engines and studios adopted the approximation-based approach that did not aim for the highest accuracy but instead a practical approximation of how light would interact with materials beneath the surface. Most of the work in this area comes from Jensen's paper published back in 2011, I mean in 2001 which was the first to introduce what they call the concept of bidirectional surface scattering distribution function, which spawned all kinds of interesting follow-up research over the years. But we have to leave that for another day. Eventually, the first real-time subsurface scattering approach was proposed by Eugene Dion, which had fantastic results. But the issue is that it was still too expensive to render in real time and needed a strong GPU something that the average gamer may not be able to afford. 
so many started to look for an alternative that doesn't take a lot of resources, which was found in screen space subsurface scattering. An idea popularized by the work of Jorge Jimenez, thanks to a very popular article that was published in the first edition of GPU Pro. As a matter of fact, variations of this technique can be still found in today even in popular game engines, such as Unreal Engine 5, and their subsurface profile shading method, which is similar to the subsurface approach but with the fundamental difference that they are based on screen space. And now the discussions become similar to that of ray tracing versus path tracing. While it doesn't look as impressive as an offline subsurface scattering, real-time subsurface rendering is still an incredible solution that can get the job done and look amazing at the same time despite of the many limitations, which we can go through later in a detailed video. And there you have it guys. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.